Now, um, understanding this um, distinction and uh, the how it connects to Newton's third law, it's uh, important uh, because um, I think I say this enough times in multiple different places that Newton's third law is the most uh, misunderstood of most often misunderstood of Newton's laws. And that's why I ask you these two uh, relatively, uh, do these two questions that I've seen people struggle with, I think it's in questions and exercise for this. And I was getting, uh, I got requests to do this one particular question before we started the session. So I'm, that's what I'm doing now. And the, those two, oh, I don't <laughs> remember the question numbers for those. So I'll just briefly show you the two questions where I deliberately put it in here so that people have chance to practice their understanding of Newton's third law. And I'll do one of them that I promised I would do. Uh, so this is one, <laughs> one question dealing with the Newton's third law. And really what's important here is uh, recognizing which are external forces. Therefore, you don't expect to find their reaction force within your system. And which are the internal forces where you should find uh, their reaction force within the system. And I think I had, yeah, and this was the other one. And I guess those two are actually kind of similar questions, but just because this looks a little bit more complicated, let me do this one. Um, oh, this diagram is super. Okay, so let me do it this way. I think if I open this image in a new tab, yeah, then I can do it this way. I'll do a split screen, show this on the right, so that I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth, which is super disorientating, and I don't want to do that. And I can actually just scroll down here. Okay. Um, yeah, so let me do this question. I don't think I have ever done this question before in uh, you know recorded the session. So. So this is a question, um, it says, consider the picture of a donkey pulling on a cart, so donkey cart, <laughs> the arrows drawn indicate different forces acting on the donkey and the cart. And the numbers in the figure are matched up with the numbers in the text below. So this is the figure that you will have available on the side. So it, uh, says each force acting on you know, listed below match each force to its reaction force pair. If there's no reaction force pair in the list, label it as an external force. So meaning that the reaction force is on an object outside the system of a donkey and cart. And, uh, oh, I forget what I say in the hint. Yeah. So um, I think uh, with each, I think I actually say it in the hint. I say in the hint, yeah. Um, most of the forces below should be an external force. So I'm gonna take a lead from that. And first to focus on determining if it's an external force or not, because if it's an external force, then I shouldn't be looking for a reaction force. I should be just labeling it as I, external force, reaction force outside the system. So, so let's get started here. Uh, number four here, backward pull on the donkey. So when I'm trying to determine, is it an external or internal force? The first thing I should think about is what is exerting that force? So what is pulling the donkey back? And I'm thinking, I guess the only thing that's attached to the donkey and could be pulling the donkey back is the cart, which is internal. So you know what, I'm gonna actually come back to that. I think I should be, find the, be able to find the reaction force to that. The, downward weight on donkey. So that's number three here. Um, so again, I'm thinking of what is exerting that force. Um, weight is a gravitational force. And uh, if it's gravity, it should be earth that's exerting that force. Earth is not part of my system. So it's an external force. Let me just label that as an external force. For the pull on cart. So that's, uh, yeah, number five here for the pull. Um, I think the question even said the donkey is pulling the cart. So, so it, this is one of the internal forces. So there's gonna be a reaction force pair somewhere. Let me skip that for now. Okay, upward, normal force on cart. Number six, that's this force here. So I'm thinking of trying to think about what object could be pushing the cart upward. And um, 
and looking at the things that are touching the cart or things that could be exerting gravity on the cart. And I think uh, I just see the ground. The ground is uh, supporting the cart and that's what's just providing the support the force. That should be an external force because well, ground that's outside my system. So this is an external force. Downward weight on cart. Oh, that's an external force for the same reason. The downward weight on donkey was uh, that was um, <laughs> external force. Earth is exerting the gravitational pull, and Earth is not part of my system. Uh, backward friction force on cart. Uh, number eight. I guess it's this one. So it says same friction. Oh, I guess I think it's talking about the friction with the ground meaning oh, that's uh, another force that's being exerted by the ground. The ground is exerting really two forces, the normal force perpendicular to the surface and a friction force parallel to the surface. So that's yeah, so another external force. Let's keep going. Forward friction force on donkey. Oh, oh, oh yeah, this is how we walk around really. When we are walking, you know, imagine this is my foot and the way I move is I, I'm actually pushing the ground back and the ground pushes forward on me. So, um, so the, this forward friction force, that's a, a force of interaction between the foot of the donkey and the ground. So ground is what's exerting that force. And okay, so that's an external force. Upward the normal force on donkey, that's external force for the same reason. This was an external force. So <laughs> quite a few external forces. In fact, oh, I think I'm kind of, I process of eliminated down to these two. So the reaction force paired to this must be number five for the pull on cart, E. And the reaction force on this must be backward pull on monkey, number four, D. Um, and really that is how these two are interacting. The donkey is pulling on the cart forward and the cart is pulling on the donkey backward. And those two forces uh, are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, just like a Newton's third law says. And, uh, and which one you label action, which one you label reaction, you can flip them around completely. You could say, oh, donkey's pull is the action force. And as a reaction force to that, cart is pulling backward on the donkey. I think that's kind of probably the natural way most of us will say, but it is perfectly correct to say, this is actually the reaction force. It's because, you know, as the donkey tries to move forward, the cart is holding the donkey back. So uh, this uh, holding back is the action force and the, the reaction force to that is the donkey ends up pulling the cart forward. And um, the reason you can flip this around is that that action reaction relationship is not a cause and effect. It's a, a two sides of a simultaneous coin. Um, so. So I guess there's a, one more question that you can try to practice on, which is the next question. And I'll leave that for you. Um, so I, I think uh, you will, uh, if uh, at the end of this week, you feel like you understood Newton's third law, that itself will be an achievement. There are students in engineering physics who are still confused about what Newton's third law means. So, <laughs> so that is one thing that I hope people will uh, 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 we'll learn as they go through this class.